Welcome to the Value Proposition Canvas walkthrough with LineBrand. Use your experience. Visit us at facebook.com slash LineBrand. This was designed with the golden mean spiral to be ancient and progressive. At the same time, client information, designer, date, and draft can be entered at the top using the PowerPoint template attached uh, below. This is under the Creative Commons license with a lot of other great people, um, Alex Osterwalder being the originator of this IP, sharing it with the world. Uh, so this builds on the business model canvas, um, also available at the links below. We always start and end with the customer. So starting with customer segments, we have um, a way of looking at them and checking our value propositions against uh, the customers. So going into more detail of looking at our customer segments, we have customer jobs. Um, customer jobs describe what a specific customer segment is trying to get done. Um, it could be the tasks as they are trying to perform and complete, the problems they are trying to solve, or the needs that they're trying to satisfy. So what functional jobs are you helping your customer get done? So an example is perform or complete a specific task, solve a specific problem. What social jobs are you helping your customer get done? Are you trying to look good, gain power or status? What emotional jobs are you helping your customer get done? What are the aesthetics, feel good, security? What basic needs are you helping your customer satisfy? Like communication, sex, basic needs. Uh, besides trying to get a core job done, your customer performs ancillary jobs in different roles. So describe the jobs your customer is trying to get done as buyer, co-creator, and transfer. In other words, trying to look good as a buyer, uh, aesthetics feel good as a co-creator, or product services to help customers dispose, transfer, resell as a transfer of that job. And then rank each of these according to its significance to your customer. So is it crucial or is it trivial? For each job, indicate how often it occurs and outline in which specific context the job is done because that may impose constraints or limitations. Um, so while driving outside, wherever you encounter um, the context of that job. So with every job, as we all know, there are pains and we'll get to the gains later. So. Pains describe negative emotions, undesired costs and situations, and risks that your customer experiences or could experience before, during, and after getting the job done. What does your customer find too costly? So does it take a lot of time, cost too much money, require substantial effort? What makes your customer feel bad? Uh, is it frustrations, annoyances, things that give them a headache? We all have our pet peeves. How are current solutions underperforming for your customer? Uh, lack of features, performance, malfunctioning. What are the main difficulties and challenging your customer encounters? So understanding how things work, difficulties getting things done, resistance. What negative social consequences does your customer encounter or fear? Loss of face, power, trust, status. Uh, this is more powerful in some cultures than others. And what risks does your customer fear? So financial, social, technical risks. What, what else could go awfully wrong? What's keeping your customer awake at night? Big issues, concerns, worries. What common mistakes does your customer make? So how can you help them avoid those mistakes? What barriers are keeping your customer from adopting solutions? They've got upfront costs, learning curves, resistance to change. So rank each of those pains according to the intensity that it represents for your customer. And is it very intense or is it light? For each pain, indicate how often it occurs. And now we can get into the gains. So this is what your customers want to gain. Describe the benefits that your customer expects, desires, or would be surprised by. This includes functional utility, social gains, positive emotions, cost savings. Which savings would make your customer happy? So in terms of time, money, effort, what outcomes does your customer expect? What would go beyond his or her expectations? Um, so quality level, some more of something, less of something. How do current solutions delight your customer? Specific features, performance, quality. What would make your customer's job or life easier? Um, flatter learning curve, more services, lower cost of ownership. What positive social consequences does your customer desire? Does it make them look good, increase their power status? 
what are customers looking for? Is it good design, guarantees, specific or more features? What do customers dream about? Getting under, understanding their big achievements, their big reliefs. How does your customer measure success and failure? So performance is cost. And what would increase the likelihood of adopting a solution? Lower cost, less investment, lower risk, better quality, performance, design. So rank each, again, uh, according to its relevance to your customer. Is it substantial or is it insignificant? And for each gain, indicate how often it occurs. So you can do this with the PowerPoint template. Uh, and then once we have the customer segments, we move over to the left and talk about the value propositions from the business model canvas, specifically with our products and services. So products and services feed back into the customer segments. So there we go. And you list all the products and services around which your value proposition is built. So which product services do you offer that help your customer to get either a functional, social, or emotional job done, or help him or her satisfy basic needs? Which ancillary product services help your customer perform the roles of buyer, co-creator, transfer, where the buyer product services help the customer to compare, decide, buy, take delivery of, co-creator product services help co-design contribute value to the solution and transfer product services to help customer dispose transfer resell to others products and services might either um, be tangible digital virtual intangible financial so tangible are manufactured goods face to face digital downloads online recommendations intangible copyrights quality assurance financial investment funds, financial services. So rank all the products and services according to their importance to, to your customer. Are they crucial or trivial to your customer? And once we have our products and services, we have to address the pains, pain relievers. Pain relievers describe how your products and services alleviate the customer pains. How do they eliminate or reduce negative emotions? undesired costs and situations and risks your customer experiences or could experience before, during, or after getting the job done. Do they produce savings, time, money, efforts, make your customers feel better, kill their frustrations, annoyances, things that could give them a headache, fix underperforming solutions, new features, better performance, better quality, put an end to difficulties and challenges your customers encounter, make things easier, helping them get done, eliminate resistance. Wipe out negative social consequences your customer encounters or fears. Loss of face, power, trust, or status. Eliminate risks your customers fear. Financial, social, technical, what else could go awfully wrong? Help your customers better sleep at night, helping with big issues, diminishing concerns, eliminating worries. Limit or eradicate common mistakes customers make, usage mistakes. Getting rid of barriers that are keeping your customer from adopting solutions. Lowering upfront investment costs, um, increasing their learning, and lowering their resistance to change. So rank each pain your products and services kill according to their intensity for your customer. Is it very intense or very light? Uh, for each pain, indicate how often it occurs. What risks could your customer experience before, during, or after getting the job done? And lastly, we've got our gain creators. So describe how the products and services create customer gains. How do they create benefits your customer expects, desires, or would be surprised by, including functional utility, social gains, positive emotions, and cost savings. Do they create savings that make your customer happy in terms of time, money, and effort? Produce outcomes your customer expects beyond their expectations, better quality level, more of something, less of something. Copy or outperform current solutions that delight your customer regarding specific features, performance, quality, make your customer's job or life easier, regarding their learning services and costs, create positive social consequences that the customer desires, making them look good, producing an increase in power or status, do something customers are looking for, good design, guarantees, specific or more features, fulfill something customers are dreaming about, help achieve big achievements, produce big reliefs, 
produce positive outcomes matching customers' success failure criteria, better performance, lower cost, help make adoption easier, lower cost, less investment, lower risk, better quality, performance, design. And then rank each gain your products and services, create according to its relevance to your customer. Is it substantial or insignificant? For each gain, indicate how often it occurs. And that is our value proposition canvas. So this is a bit of a check and balance after you fill a business model canvas. Um, you will have started with your customer segments, gone to your value propositions, um, looked at your channels, your customer relationships that are developed as a result, and then going into greater detail of the key resources and activities that may be provided by key partners and all of the uh, costs associated with service or product delivery and the revenues associated with customers uh, buying uh, those goods and services through your channels, developing relationships. So at this stage, you should have a very clear understanding of your value propositions through your products and services, delivering to your customers, alleviating their pains and helping their gains with the jobs they have to do. I'm Jonathan Blackwell with LineBrand. Thanks again. Um, you know, comment on the work that I've done to try to make this work that Alex Osterwalder did uh, more clear and easy to understand. Um, it's, it's incredibly valuable work, and I enjoy using it with my clients. Feel free to use these resources with your clients. Feel free to contact me if you want to have guidance and work together in realizing your goals and dreams with the business plan that you have. So thanks again for your time. And until next time, Jonathan Blackwell, Blind Brand, signing off.